Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. I'm about to utter the words that every video game collector has said at one time or another, and that is, I will never run out of space. Boy, are you wrong, and so were we. So today we're going to talk about a little side project we did um, that completed our back wall behind us. Uh, no, it's not the Super Metroid point painting. That was a big side project. Today, we're gonna talk about our Nintendo controller uh, on our back wall, as you'll see in this uh, little video, and also the um, upscaled Nintendo cartridges that we put as a piece of artwork. Now, we don't like just having a game room that's cluttered, full of stuff. We like to have an entertaining space. We have our friends over a lot. We like to host parties. We like it to be a multi-purpose room. And we also really like to make our own things. We like to put our own spin on our game room and do a lot of our own stuff. So we're going to do a quick video to show you guys a time lapse of this and also talk about the dimensions of the controller if anybody wants to make one also the uh the upscaled cartridges the nintendo cartridges if anybody wants to make those so we'll give you guys all the dimensions in the comment section below and yeah you guys want to try them out for yourself it is also a great way that we use to conceal the door behind us because we didn't want a half door in our game room just stuck out like a sore thumb just hey i'm a door anyhow it's also our cat door so it had to kind of stay but yeah we're going to talk about all that and let's get rolling watch this so as you'll notice scott is getting ready to paint the door there's not a whole lot of prep work involved uh we did change out the hinges to black hinges and we did remove the doorknob the reason for removing the doorknob is because we wanted to have the biggest controller we could. If we left the doorknob, we would also have to replace it with a black one. The best solution here was to get a piece of flat bar, paint it black, and then put it on the door. We also used a really strong magnet so that when we closed the door, we weren't relying on the uh, doorknob itself and the latch to keep the door closed. Now it has a magnet, so it does the same thing. The only real prep work outside of that was sanding down the cat door, and then we just painted the whole thing. As you'll notice, we painted it to blend into the wall, we painted all the trim and the door itself, and also on the inside of the door, so that when you looked through, you wouldn't see any white, Basically, why not? Let's get it all done at once. You'll also notice that we left a piece of the door gray. That's because we were putting our Nintendo controller over it. The Nintendo controller itself, where the start and select button are, have a bit of a depression. So we wanted to mimic that on the door as well. Once we had everything done with the door, I was working upstairs to get the controller done. Scott cut everything out in advance and measured it all. As I said, that will be in the comment section below. And we wanted to also make the buttons raised as they would be on a controller. So Scott cut extra pieces for the D-pad as well as the A and B button on the controller itself. I did a lot of taping off. It wasn't a hard job. The biggest part was getting the lettering on so that it looked good. If you guys have access to some sort of stencil or I guess a vinyl cutting machine that could make a stencil for you, that would be a really easy solution. But I wanted to do it as quickly and cost effectively as possible. And I think on this whole project, paint we already had, we just basically had to buy the wood and the magnet and the door latch and that was about it. I think all in and the hinges, we spent probably around $40 if, and we had the black paint and I do a lot of painting on the side. So we had all the extra paint. Uh, for the cartridges themselves, that was another really easy solution. We had the wood left over from the controller. So we decided to cut three Nintendo cartridges out kind of going with the theme on the wall. As you'll notice, we have a big Super Mario 3 box art. And with the Nintendo controller, we want to keep with that same theme. So instead of painting 
those tedious pictures on the cartridges. What I ended up doing was buying some sticker paper and doing that instead. And it actually worked really well. And now you'll see that Scott's gonna put everything on the wall, get everything ready. And while I was doing that, it all had time to dry. And if we're being honest, it wasn't all done in one day. I did take a couple days to do the Nintendo controller and the cartridges, but yeah. All in all, it was a really quick, easy, simple solution to finish off this wall. And now it's complete. And that is the only one wall in our game room that is complete at this point, but it's ever evolving. And it's just what it is. Hey guys, so I hope you liked that. Like I said, just a quick video. I had it in my database of videos. And it was something I just forgot to talk about. It was one of our updates. We've been working all COVID season long on our game room because why not? We had the time and uh, we got some stuff done that had been on our plates for a while. That was one of them. That was a big point of contention of what do we do with that door? And I, I think we did the door well. I think it completed the wall. So anyways, uh, if you guys want to comment below some maybe neat things you've put into your game room that made it special to you, uh, ways you've concealed a door or ways you've changed a wall or something in your game room that made it, you know, more either more functional or more pleasing to the eye, we would love to hear about it. Anyways, until next time, keep gaming and game on.